So here we are looking at the algebraic properties of the cross product. So to begin, let's let vector u, v, and w be three vectors in R3. And let's go ahead and let c and d be any scalars our little hearts desire. So the first property is the zero vector property. And this says that if we take a vector u and cross it with itself, then we end up with the zero vector. Now we also have a second zero vector property. And this property says that if we cross vector u with the zero vector, that's equivalent to crossing the zero vector with vector u, which ultimately will give us the zero vector. Property number three we observed in the previous example, the anti-commutative property. So this property says that vector u cross vector v is equal to minus the cross product of vector v and vector u. Property number four is our associative property. So this property tells us that if we take the cross product of two scalar multiples, so say we have the scalar multiple c times vector u, and we cross this with the scalar multiple d times vector v, this is equivalent to the scalar multiple of the cross product of these two vectors. So in other words, we group those scalar multiples c times d and multiply this by the cross product of the vector u with vector v. The fifth property is the first of two distributive properties. So if we have vector u and we cross this vector with the sum of vector v and vector w, then this is equivalent to the sum of the two cross products. So this would be the cross product of vector u with vector v plus the cross product of vector u with vector w. Now, our last algebraic property here, number six, is similar, but this time we have the sum of vector u and vector v and we're crossing this with a vector w. So this is going to be equivalent to vector u cross vector w plus vector v cross vector w. And just like the algebraic properties of the dot product, we can easily verify these algebraic properties of the cross product using computation. So again, I encourage you and challenge you to try to verify some of these properties in R3. Direction of the cross product. So it's important to note that both vectors u cross v and v cross u are orthogonal, which means perpendicular and also means normal. So these two vectors are perpendicular to the plane containing vectors v and u. So in other words, we can conclude that the vector u cross v and vector v cross u, which is of course parallel to u cross v, just pointing in the opposite direction. So these two vectors are perpendicular to vector u and vector v. So an easy way for us to remember the orientation of vector u, vector v, and the cross product of those two vectors is to start by comparing them to our familiar standard unit vectors in three dimensions. So here's an illustration. We want to think about a portion of the xy plane. So we have this shaded in blue here. Here's our xy plane. And we know that this is defined as z is equal to zero. And of course, keep in mind that this xy plane is extending infinitely in all directions. I'm just thinking about a small portion of it. So what do I want to do? I want to compare the orientation of the cross product to the standard unit vectors. So we can say here is the standard unit vector in the x direction, i hat. And here is the standard unit vector in the y direction, j hat. And we know that these two vectors have the following components. The unit vector j hat has the components 0, 1, 0. And i hat has components 1, 0, 0. Now notice 
these two standard unit vectors, i hat and j hat, lie in the xy plane. So this lets us know that the cross product of these two vectors is going to be perpendicular to the xy plane, pointing in the positive z direction. Right, so the cross product of i hat and j hat is equal to k hat, which has the components 0, 0, 1. And again, we can see this just from this illustration that the cross product of i and j is perpendicular to the xy plane, as well as being perpendicular to vector i and vector j. So if you don't believe me, that's okay. Let's do the math. So we are taking the cross product of i hat and j hat. So putting this into our 3 by 3 determinant, we have i hat, j hat, and k hat. Don't get those confused with what we're looking at. So we know that i hat has the components 1, 0, 0, and that j hat has the components 0, 1, 0. And we're taking the determinant here to attain the cross product. So computing the cross product, we are left with 0 minus 0 times i hat minus 0 minus 0 j hat plus 1 minus 0 k hat, which leaves us with just k hat. So we've confirmed that the cross product of the standard unit vector in the x direction crossed with the standard unit vector in the y direction is equal to the standard unit vector in the z direction, which of course we know has the components 0, 0, 1. Now, what about if we think about the reverse? What about the cross product of vector j with vector i? What is this going to be equal to? Well, keeping the algebraic properties of the cross product in mind, we know that the vector j cross i is parallel to vector i cross j. It's just simply pointing in the opposite direction. So this vector is equal to minus k hat. So adding this to our graph above, we can see that the cross product of j hat and i hat is the standard unit vector pointing in the negative z direction. So this has the components 0, 0, negative 1. And again, this vector is below the xy plane, but is still perpendicular to it. And we can again see that it, this vector is both perpendicular to i hat as well as being perpendicular to j hat.